What I wanted to share with you is uh, where we stand today in terms of not only financial services and IT services in general, but a huge wave coming um, that will really change the world. I just had the chance to spend a week in California with the top people of AI from various companies, like head of AI of Google, uh, CEO of Microsoft, uh, guys from OpenAI, NVIDIA, and all the others, so all the, all the head people of AI. And wh what I'm seeing coming is something that we are not aware of here in Europe and either in Poland. Uh, and this what is happening right now in, in the US especially, and China I believe as well, but there we don't know much about this, uh, is something that's bigger than this beginning of the 80s when the PC came to the market, it's bigger than the internet in the 90s when it occurred, and it's bigger than the mobile phone in 2007. And we are not aware what is coming and we are not aware of the pace in which it is coming. And the cycle of adoption of AI is unbelievable. You all know about OpenAI, ChatGPT, that reached 100 million users within three months. Now, everybody's working heavily on this right now in the US, especially in the financial service. You have projects going on, most using generative AI right now to change all the paperwork they are doing. Projects that are valued of billions of dollars within the biggest, biggest banks, and they're all investing heavily into this, into this project. So I see this as a huge wave coming that will really change the market, change the market in an unbelievable way. Um, when the mobile phone came to the market, the CEO of Ericsson said that he doesn't see a big market for smartphones actually, because smartphones are bought by smart people. There are not so many smart people. So, uh, and we know what happened to Ericsson and his peers from the Scandinavian market, Nokia also didn't see it coming. And the adoption of the mobile phone took about five to seven years to get to the inflection point. Now this will be way faster. So I would like to encourage you all to look deep into this. We are doing this at Ileron within the group of Ileron Software Mind, where we have right now 2,000 2, professionals. We have already 100 data scientists and we are training heavily our people because hiring those specialists, especially experienced in project, is extremely difficult, if not costly. But it is not so difficult actually to train the great programmers in those kind of technologies. So, so have a look at this and, and really do those projects. And if you look at the market, you have these three hyperscaling platforms, which is uh, data, data providers actually, and data center providers, which is Azure, Microsoft, uh, Azure, AWS, and, and of course, Google. I would say Google is the most advanced in all the, in all the spectrum of technology, but they are the least selling capable company. So then you have Microsoft, which bought OpenAI. So they are right now on a good track and they are kind of good selling to enterprise. And you have AWS that is the best selling company. So, and as we know, not the best technology wins in our market, but the best sold technology win. This is the reason why Microsoft and Bill Gates with the Balmer attitude, they took over this piece of market. And so, so I would say take a care look at OpenAI because they have a big advancement, although they will not let these models uh, to be run in your private cloud. So it will be always bound to the public clouds, which for the financial industry will not be uh, acceptable for a while. All the, all the platforms, they promise us not to share your data. It means if you place your data in OpenAI or uh, not OpenAI, in, in Azure or other places, they will not be shared for sure. And this we know and we are sure about. But what we don't know and what we are afraid of is that, that your corporate intelligence, it means that, that intelligence derived from the data, the training, the model, this will be shared. Although they are all promising and it will not, and it will really be not. So we are right now like in the age of Salesforce or nobody trusted Salesforce to put their most precious data, which, which is the leads and the selling capabilities into Salesforce. But after many years, everybody understood that this data can be kept secretly and today everybody trusts Salesforce. The same will be actually happening with the public clouds and public large language models. So, but it will, from the regulatory point of view, will not be accepted. You are choosing the environment you want to set up your projects into. You are choosing model companies. And this is very important because over there, we are like at the stage in the 90s when RDBMS companies are kind of 
popping up on the market, many of them. You remember, we had Informix, Cybex, Oracle Progress, many of them, and Oracle One. So the same is happening with the, model, with the model companies. So one of them will evoke, most probably, and will be the leading one who will be using them all in terms of delivering uh, AI capabilities. But the most important in our organization are actually data scientists. There are people that are taking all those stacks and building solutions tailored to your needs. And this is the way it will be run. So an also important take of it is that the total cost of ownership will be changing dramatically. So we are used to the model that we are paying like 65, 75% while purchasing the solution. Then we are paying 20 to 25% in implementing or installing or integrating the solution and then fuel for the maintenance ongoing from five to 15%. Now with the AI investments, budget will change to one third, one third, one third. So this is very important to have it in mind that ongoing maintenance of models and data will take a lot of money. And these are very costly products, not only from the cost of workforce, but also from the cost of consumption. So for example, the Changes from three and a half to four in the OpenGI model is a five-factor uh, costly in terms of computing power. And if we are coming to computing power, today we live in a processor GPU crunch market. NVIDIA cannot provide processors to the leading clouds, so the clouds they cannot develop. Actually, Microsoft will not give you a lot of computing power of OpenAI because they are lacking it at, at Azure. And NVIDIA decided to enter into the cloud business. Miss NVIDIA will be a fourth player here. So Google started immediately projects of producing their own TPU. So today we are living in a world where there's a huge lack of processors and they cannot scale. This is the reason why NVIDIA cost 200% for, I increased like 200% from the, uh, from recent months. And it will be very interesting how this, how this game will be going forward. So I'll leave you with the message invest in AI, choose right partners that have the people and treat it more as a custom projects, taking best stacks that you can have on the market. So have a great day. And if you'd like to talk to me, I'll be here for, for some while. Thanks.